what goes into finding the direct investment. Um, reasons why we're studying this, it has important implications in both policy, advising, and implementation. Uh, it's essential for business practices, and it's at the core to our understanding of what actually drives growth and development in the world. So what is foreign direct investment? Um, here's a technical definition, but put simply, it is the amount of money invested in a country from overseas businesses. Um, I looked around to try and find what would be the best way to determine what exactly goes into these numbers. Um, these are some of the sources I used. From the International Monetary Fund, I found that FDI is, which is foreign direct investment, is relatively unaffected at the primary level. So basically, if the country has natural resources, it's going to be invested in, and that's unchanged by any other country-specific factor. Um, from the Federal Reserve Bank in St. Louis, I um, examined the impact that multi-domestic firms have on economies and how government policy can interact with these firms to attract more investment. Um, but their findings are pretty um, ambiguous. And finally, the most useful thing was in the Journal of, Pakis of the Pakistani Journal of Economic and Social Review, which focused mainly on developing countries. They found that in upper and middle income countries, the primary determinants were uh, domestic investment, labor force, external debt, tr and trade openness. However, in the lower income countries, the major determinants were uh, urbanization, market size, uh, current accounts, and inflation. So uh, basically what does all this mean? It means that there is no, it's, uh, there's no real consensus and it's just a complicated thing. So there's several factors I investigated. First of all, the countries I looked at, I looked at all countries that I could get data for uh, across all regions, incomes, and populations to avoid any possible bias that certain regions may have. Um, I looked at four variables. These were the Corruption Perception Index, which is an index put out by Transparency, Transparency International. Um, it looks at how corrupt the public sector is perceived to be. It uh, ranges from a scale from 0 to 100, with 0 being the, least, uh, zero being the most corrupt, and 100 being the least corrupt. Uh, just for reference, the US has an index rating of 73, Australia 85, Denmark 90 and North Korea of 8. So there's a basic range of scale. Um, I also looked at property rights, which is determined by the Heritage Foundation Index of Economic Freedom. This is basically the various legal protections you have for both physical property and intellectual property. Uh, I looked at the GDP growth. There's the real GDP growth for 2011. This is our numbers from the World Bank. And also from the World Bank, I looked at economic freedom, which is basically a measure of what the policies the country has impacting on the amount of the ease to export from their country. Um, these are the variables here. Uh, as you can see, the average direct investment is about $5.3 billion in a country, and it ranges from almost negative 3 billion, which means the country invest more overseas and is invested in it and ranges up to almost $85 billion. Uh, the corruption perception index, the average is 43, and as we see, there's North Korea at 8 and Denmark at 90. Uh, GDP growth ranges between, uh, average of 4%, range between negative 10 to plus 21, so a huge range there. Uh, export restrictions were uh, zero being very restrictive and one being very unrestrictive, uh, 0 0.4 was the maximum, an average of 0 0.12. So, I mean, it's, it's overall, it's very hard to export stuff more than you'd imagine. Uh, property rights are uh, about average of the range and the average. Uh, I use an ordinary least square regression to go over these variables and find their impact on foreign direct investment. Uh, is the equation we used. So, basically, it came back with these uh, parameter estimates. Which um, I will take a moment to explain. It um, basically shows these the positive signs on these two basically say that as corruption goes down and as export restrictions go down, foreign direct investment goes up. Uh, similarly, the negative signs on GDP and property rights, which is somewhat surprising, as they both go up, uh, foreign direct investment goes down, which was quite surprising to me when I found it. Um, I looked at 
the dermal certificate to test for uh, any serial correlation just from repetitively measuring. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't influencing it. And uh, a score of 1.8 shows that it's not very uh, correlated. Well, sorry, serial correlated. Um, explanations for why this could be the way it is. Um, that would be that uh, perhaps that it is. Uh, yeah. Explanations for what? Sorry. The explanatory power of the regression is um, strong, with, strongly different from zero, with an F statistic of 4.2, uh, basically giving credence to the model. Uh, although CPI, uh, GDP, and property rights have low significant levels, I believe for such a general model that 10% is reasonable to estimate from. Um, so, in conclusion, my study found that export freedom has the strongest effect out of all the four factors. Uh, this is unsurprising, really, as the at its most fundamental level, business is about making profit, and you can't make profit if you can't take it with you. Um, this is evidenced in the real world by such countries as Venezuela, who have very restrictive uh, export rules and very low levels of foreign direct investment. Uh, corruption perception also positively correlated, um, although not by the magnitude. It's actually quite a small magnitude. Uh, one possible explanation for this is that large firms in particular may find that it's actually advantageous to go into some places where corruption is high because they can guarantee stability through the tribes or any other means. Um, surprisingly though, with the negative correlations between GDP and property rights. Um, the best explanations I come up with, GDP uh, could be related in that as GDP increases, real wages go up as well which in effect makes it less appetizing to invest money in that country as opposed to some other country where wages haven't increased. And finally, for the property rights, uh, I believe my explanation for this is that foreign direct investment is quite highly concentrated in developing countries, and as such, they don't have the legal protections available as other countries do. Thank you.